Yeah. With me, Natasha Badwar, uh, columnist and filmmaker from India. Uh, Natasha, can you please uh, give us uh, an overview of the role of social media in India? So, um, social media has caught up. It, it's really caught the imagination of almost every economic class, every social strata in India. And uh, the barriers that used to exist, the barriers of technology, the barriers of literacy, uh, is, you know, they have been broken uh, much faster by social media. Um, smartphones are getting cheaper, uh, the information is coming in a more and more um, you know, simplified entertainment form. So in a sense, the smartphone screen is something that has replaced almost every other screen. Uh, its availability at all times, its connectivity is much better. And uh, uh, WhatsApp is really uh, you know, a medium that has uh, that has kind of uh, run away with it in, in a sense. And uh, a lot of information is coming in. Some of it's fake. Some of it uh, uh, that needs to be uh, analyzed better than it is being. But it, it's certainly uh, something that um, has captured. People. You're mentioning WhatsApp. Uh, why are you highlighting this application? Uh, if you would list the priority uh, or the most important social media application, which one would be the top and which one would be not so important? Yeah. So, of course, there's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram as a trio. Uh, but WhatsApp's got a much, much deeper reach uh, than the other two. Uh, the data comes much faster on it. It comes from your own curated groups, uh, so it tends to have much more, um, you know, credibility. It, it, it may not be credible, but it seems credible because it's coming to you from your own family groups, your own alumni groups. But is it used as a personal messaging system, or are we talking in the context of social media? So yeah, so clearly WhatsApp is, uh, you know, didn't start off as a social media platform. Uh, it started off as a personal messaging service. But the way in which it lends itself to the formation of groups, the way it, uh, in which it lends itself to sharing of data and videos, it, it has become, uh, you know, it's become very, very popular. Uh, India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi is one of the big stars of social media. I think he has one of the most uh, big, biggest followers of, on Twitter. Is this limited to him or also second class and third class politicians use the media? Uh, so th the name that comes uh, right next to um, you know, Prime Minister Modi's use of social media is uh, Sushma Swaraj. The you know, the minister the, and the railways, the railways uh, ministry has taken on the media. A lot of police departments are using Twitter accounts. So uh, it's clearly something that people who become savvy with the medium itself have used to communicate directly with those whom they can influence. And anybody who's kind of caught on to this innovative way of communicating directly has become very popular. So, uh, you know, it's a, it's a great PR exercise, it's a great PR tool for people who need to be influential. So you say the railways are using it. Can you give us an example and also somehow also explain to what extent the government, I mean, this is a government institution, is implementing social media strategies for their own purposes? Um, so uh, there is a mandate. Um, running across not only in the central government but in many of the state governments to use social media more and more. But how uh, different ministries and different governments are being able to adapt to it has been very different from each other. So uh, for example, the former uh, government in uh, Uttar Pradesh, Akhilesh Yadav's government was very, very savvy, which is why the UP police, which has otherwise had a very intimidating uh, presence and an intimidating kind of uh, reputation uh, has now taken to social media and people are, uh, you know, corresponding with it. Uh, so it's not like uh, every railway um, query is being solved on social media, but the fact that it is there uh, creates a, you know, a huge, pub it's, it's a huge uh, public relations exercise in a sense. We are here at uh, the meeting of the jury for the Social Media Awards 2017 and uh, we discussed uh, some 
um, interesting projects. Uh, and one uh, word which was used again and again, the role of social media in transforming society, the transformational role, I think it's a very ambitious uh, uh, formulation, but uh, can you give us an example in India where social media have transformed society and some transformed situation? Uh, so, you know, it's social media is really, it's so new that it is open to innovation. And uh, while it started as a very individualistic medium where people were using it more for personal communication, it has quickly become something where a lot of campaigns are being run, where a lot of uh, messaging is being done. Uh, and uh, anybody who is able to figure out the way in which the river flows on social media has been able to use it very well. Uh, one of the things that has happened um, because of the presence of Facebook and Twitter is, uh, you know, it's a space for women to speak up. It's a space uh, for uh, uh, a lot of uh, writing that would not get space in the mainstream media to, um, you know, to be able to, uh, it's a platform for that, but there's a lot of Dalit writing on uh, social media, uh, first in the form of blogs and then uh, in their Facebook and Twitter profiles. There's a lot of feminist writing, there's a lot of, uh, you know, reportage from rural areas, so we've got um, the outfit called Khabar Lehria, which is run entirely by Dalit women journalists who are using low-cost technology to bring the news that matters to them, to their own audience. So, But does that transform society? Does that reduce evil? Does that get rid of discrimination? I mean, that's the challenge, isn't it? So, uh, you know, th these are large goals. Yeah. And uh, we know that they're not going to... Uh, this kind of transformation uh, at this scale is not going to be, it's not a short-term uh, objective, it's not a short-term goal, let's end uh, And yet, <coughs> if you stick to the mainstream tools, if you stick to the capitalist economy where, you know, you need a lot of money and you need a lot of uh, social and political influence to be able to disseminate information, you're not going to get a lot of voices, you're not going to be able to give space to a lot of voices. Social media, because it's free, uh, because it, uh, you know, information moves very quickly, and because it's a place where the audience can find you. So, uh, you know, it's, in, in that sense, it's like a flowing river. Uh, and there's information that is put on there once can be accessed over time across spaces again and again. So yes, it is. Uh, there will be change. There is already change. Just the fact that um, someone like me who um, I spent 35 years of my life not having read any um, feminist literature that was uh, or that originated in India. Not that it didn't exist, it did, but it was not part of any of the uh, you know, mainstream routes that I had access to, has now uh, been able to read translations, has been able to read the new work of generations that came before me and the ones that are coming after me, is something that has come from social media. And the more ideas are exchanged, the more minds can open up. Thank you very much, Natasha, for these insights, and I wish you all the best for the future. Thank you.